The sun is arising, everybody. I am in Boulder, Colorado. This is where I went to school for college, University of Colorado, go Buffs. And uh, just coming through campus on my way to the foothills. Yes, we're gonna go get some vertical today. Time to go to school in the mountains. Oh, oh baby. All right, going up Mount Sanitas in Boulder, Colorado first, Green Mountain second, possibly Flagstaff third. We'll see how the legs are feeling. All I gotta say is welcome to the channel. Welcome to a little seeking beauty, seeking beauty. Hi, hi. Hose is frozen, hose is frozen, oh boy. Can't get any water. It's in the teens, it's in the teens, but it's supposed to get into the 50s, low 50s later today. Holy smokes, all right, up we go. Eighty, eighty-one hundred feet. We'll take it. Ooh, that was further than I expected. I lived in Boulder for five years in college, and I never did Green Mountain. I feel a little ashamed about that. But it's like you know, when you're training at the University of Colorado. I better get away from the. Uh, it's like a big drop off right there. I'm gonna move over here. Uh, when you're training at the University of Colorado, 
you just don't do this like this is out of the ordinary for collegiate cross country collegiate track you know and i understand that but now as i explore aerobic development building that base i'm just not afraid to uh to test the limits of elevation gain so i think i don't know so far i'm thinking we're gotta be close to 4,000 feet of vertical gain which is about 1100 feet 1100 meters so uh no over 1100 meters i'll figure it out back at the car there's a storm coming there's a storm coming I would recommend uh, not doing Green Mountain. If you live in Colorado, I should have packed the ice skates. It's a little crazy up here. It's just sheer ice. And of course, I don't have screws in the bottom of my Speedcross 5s. So we're just kind of ice skating down the hill here. After the uh, ice skating, I am more than happy to run through some mud. And we're back, and we're back. All right, just under 15 miles, and my watch died, and so I have to split up this run, and this is, oh, it's, it's all going according to plan. And except for my watch died, uh, what I'm doing today is yes, just got the vertical in, and now I'm gonna do go do some faster stuff down here on the pavement, on the roads. And yes, I am gonna pull out the Hoka Carbon Rocket and the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. What I'm gonna do, publish two videos today, but the second one is gonna be very, very short uh, because this is not, this is not gonna be my comparison video between the Hoka Carbon Rocket and the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. These names, these names. But I do want to begin to familiarize myself between the two shoes. Like how are they feeling? How do the carbon fiber plates feel in both shoes? So I'm switching in right now and we're gonna go do three miles in each. Sound good? Sound good YouTube? All right, come on. Let's see. Pulling out that cardboard. Man, I did not have good luck with the batteries today. My GoPro died, the watch died. Definitely uh, pretty fascinating to go from the 11 ounce Solomon Speedcross 5s to, I think I'm gonna go with the Hoka Carbon Rockets first first, which is seven ounces, and then switch into the Nike Vaporfly 4% fly knits, which are six ounces. Kind of an interesting transition, I would say. I, I wonder if anyone else in the world is doing that today. Three miles in the vapor flies, now two strides. Oh my goodness, so many thoughts, but I can't share them now. I can't share them now. All right, see you back at the studio.
And here we are back in the studio. Okay, while I was gone in the mountains today in Boulder, it's not really the mountains, but you know, close enough. Something arrived in the mail. I don't think I ordered anything. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, there's a note, hold on. Let's get, it looks like somebody sent a t-shirt. Oh my goodness. Fleet Feet in Memphis, Fleet Feet in Memphis. All right, shout out, I love, okay, in Colorado, there's not too many Fleet Feet stores, unfortunately, but shout out to Fleet Feet in Memphis, and this is from, hold on here, Justin. Thank you, Justin, for the t-shirt, you're the best. Oh my goodness, okay, it's a pretty long note, I'm not gonna write, I'm not gonna read it all to you right now. Oh man, well, okay, I'll read a little bit. Uh, let's see. First off, I didn't have a used small, but for everything you do for the community of running and your family, I say you're worth the new shirt. Yeah! Fleet Feet Memphis is not just a shoe store, but a running family that will do whatever it takes to make you feel great in shoes and in the running world. It goes on and on. I will read all of this later, Justin. Thank you so much for sending this. Oh, should we put it on? Should we put it on? All right, we're gonna put it on. Why not? Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, there it is, there it is. Thank you, Justin. And yes, if you wanna send a t-shirt to me from your track club, your cross country team, your running shoe store, my PO box is down below. It's down below in the description of every single video. I think it's PO Box 1972. Thank you, Justin. This is amazing. Layton, it's comfortable. All right, moving on to today's running. And yes, I'm actually gonna lead off. Okay, keyword is green. Keyword is green because the mountain, the second mountain that I did today is called Green Mountain, which that was my first time up Green Mountain ever in my entire life. And so the question of the day, is there a running shoe out of all those genres of running shoes that has actually impacted and changed the way that you train because I'm guessing, hopefully, the shoe is so good at what it was designed to do. Does that make sense? So, for me, an example for all of you is yes, the Solomon Speed Cross 5 and, let's see, where is it? The Solomon Speed Cross 4 does fall into this category as well, but the more I run in the Speed Cross 5, the more I'm realizing how much of an upgrade this shoe is and it is impacting and changing the way that I train in Colorado right now in the winter time. Even 365 days ago, I was not, I was doing hardly any vertical gain in the middle of the winter. It's just too snowy, too icy, sometimes too muddy. And that's the crazy thing about Colorado is that you saw like today, it was in the teens when I started running and I got back to my car and it was in the 50s, low 50s, but enough to turn all of that, that snow into mud. And so these speed cross fives are just, they're just rocking my world and they're actually changing the way that I'm training in 2019. That's exciting, okay? That's exciting. So that's the question of the day. Think about it, think back to all the running shoes that you've ever worn and uh, gosh, oh, I, I will stop there. So how did today's run go? Did it went really well, went, did 13 miles in the speed cross fives, in the mud and the ice and the snow and just craziness up there in the mountains. And then I split the mileage, so eight more miles. So I went 21 miles total, uh, 33 kilometers. And let's see, 50, it was basically combining both runs together. It was 5,500 feet of vertical gain. So those mountains were bigger than I expected. Green Mountain, I didn't realize it went all the way up to 8,100 feet, which is basically the elevation that I grew up at. Like my hometown was 8,000 feet. And so for me, <laughs> I, I had to do the conversion real quick. So for meters today, it was 1600 meters of vertical gain and loss. And then the last eight miles today was in the carbon rockets and the Vaporfly 4%. And I'm really glad that I did that. I split the mileage right down the middle. And that's just, it. again, it just goes back to muscle memory. Like if you have a shoe on your feet and on your legs and then you switch immediately or at least as quick as possible. I think I switched probably in about three minutes and then I just hopped right into the other one and it's like, oh, money, like this is, I can feel the difference. So comparison coming up very soon. 
And before we sign off, before we sign off, I just want to give some shout outs to the Demore Global Running. If you're new, welcome. There's a Strava group that we've created called Demore Global Running. It's basically where we all are collecting now. There's over 700 runners in this group on Strava and it's just crazy. And so Devin, Joe, uh, Jiwan, and that's the thing. Sorry if I don't pronounce your name right, but that's why I called the group Demore Global Running because it's literally every, like around the world. And so if I don't pronounce your name correctly, I apologize. Michael, uh, Tyler, uh, Gabe, Micah, Mark, Warren, and the list, Brian, oh my goodness, Jim, uh, Jack, and I could go on all night for that. Thank you for joining. It's exciting. I'm trying to engage as much as possible there and just give you guys encouragement. Like, we're doing it. We are doing it, YouTube. We're doing it. So thank you for being here. It's exciting to run in three different shoes in one day. But the reason I'm doing it is for you so that I can give you my, although I've already given you my full review of this guy, and yes, I love it, but just to give you as much data and opinion as possible for how these shoes are stacking up against each other. Oh, you're the best. You're the best. That's it. That's it. I'm signing off. Seek beauty. Work hard. Justin, thank you. And love each other. See you tomorrow. Oh, love it.